Okay, we're ready. Welcome everyone. This is not an AA meeting, just to remind you. It is simply one member's take on the exact nature of the wrong, which is found on page 64 of the AA Big Book, and the solution of the 12 steps. This is being recorded. It is being streamed live on Facebook. This is not an all share meeting, rather it's a question and answer for Paul's take on the 12 steps. For details of all Paul's events, his story under arrest books, which under arrest takes you through the steps, the all 12 steps, uh, books, t-shirts, past events, videos, Check out his website on zenbitchslap.com. All right. Now, Paul, would you like a reading this morning? Sure. Okay, I found something on We Agnostics starting right at the very beginning, page 44 bottom of the page, uh, going on to page 45. If a mere code of morals or a better philosophy of life were sufficient to overcome alcoholism, many of us would have recovered long ago. But we found that such codes and philosophies did not save us, no matter how much we tried. We could wish to be moral. We could wish to be philosophically comforted. In fact, we, we could will these things with all our might. But the needed power wasn't there. Our human resources, as marshaled by the will, were not sufficient, they failed utterly. Lack of power, that was our dilemma. We had to find a power by which we could live and it had to be a power greater than ourselves, obviously. But where and how were we to find this power? Well, that's exactly what this book is about. Its main object is to enable you to find a power greater than yourself, which will solve your problem. That means we have written a book which we believe to be spiritual as well as moral. And it means, of course, that we're going to talk about God. Here, difficulty arises with agnostics. Many times we talk to a new man and watch his hope rise as we discuss his alcoholic problems and explain our fellowship. But his face falls when we speak of spiritual matters, especially when we mention God, for we have reopened a subject which our man thought he had neatly evaded or entirely ignored. How's that for a lead? Pretty good, pretty good. Yes, yeah, so not to go into each word, but, but the feeling of the overall spirit of it all was that obviously something had taken or had occupied me and without knowing it had limited my, my possibilities and was not allowing me to access whatever power was available. So basically, what would be the greatest position a host could have from the parasite's point of view, a powerless position. So the host can't put up any fight and the parasite has its way with the host. So in a sense, that's where we found ourselves. If you want to look at this example, the parasite had basically basically defined what and who we are and could be and was giving us a very limited diet of maybe just maybe something small could happen 
like getting a parking space in front of a meeting and stuff like that. So our dilemma was powerlessness because there was a power that was dominating us. And the way it can dominate us is to keep us in a sense of powerlessness. And I truly believe it keeps us in that sense by the bondage of self. Yeah. So we're bonded to this idea that does not empower us. It, it empowers the parasite. So the parasite works through self, uses self to live a life through us. So the program asks us to please pray and have, please relieve us of this bondage of self because obviously no human power can and we are of that stage of humanness. Yeah, so we can. So we ask, so something has to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And that's basically the observation of that's happening is step two. You come to believe that something has did for us what we could not do for ourselves. Yeah. And this is just the beginning of perhaps the better way. So when you trust, when you have faith in self, you're disempowered. Yeah. You're taken yeah. over. You're used. You have a new, you have an employer that's using you. And the best way it can use you is in a weak, fragile condition. Yeah. yeah. So we, we realize, so we now get introduced to a new employer through this idea of the third step. And that employer being all powerful is not going to exert its power on us, but through us. Yeah. Which is the other way around of then the parasitical movement. So this power is going to come through us and it's going to hopefully lead us to become of maximum use to it to it in its little agendas and therefore we'll get the benefit and others will get the benefit yeah so it's basically just a clear line drawn between what it's like to live under the old employer and what it's like to live under the new employer yeah and to know once getting established in recovery in sobriety that we're going to grow in recovery and we're going to move from the, debil the debilitating condition of insane abject faith in self to a faith in the infinite yeah we right. could not we could not lead that journey we cannot take that journey but we can be directed through that journey yeah. And so basically that's sort of what I feel this is implying once again. Yeah. So philosophies held by self, they're, they're sort of like self-knowledge avails us nothing. Yeah. When the self is claiming to be the one who has the philosophies, when you most need the philosophies, they won't be anywhere around. Yeah. This is just what happens under the bondage of self. You can know, you can read every book about relationship and all the things you shouldn't do at a certain moment and be, and be able to say and quote every freaking page. And yet when the situation arises, you forget the whole thing and you, and then the foot is put in the mouth once again, and you got to clean up the, the shit. So basically, uh, this is a transformation. It's not really uh, a gaining of knowledge. It's a trans. It's a knowledge of certain things. So, self knowledge avails us nothing, but knowledge of self can be very valuable. Yeah, because if you have knowledge of self, you'll see your other, and once you see yourself as other, in a po in a parasite host relationship, it's bad news for the parasite. <laughs> The parasite likes to have the host thinks it's, uh, think it's the host, yeah? Once the host gets a little understanding that it may not be the parasite, that's a bad day for the parasite. <laughs> it's time, it's days may be numbered <laughs> at that point. That's why it usually brings out the big guns because, because it, it's always very threatening, but when it's threatened, you can see its behavior, yeah? But it's always threatening the host constantly. But when it's threatened, you really, its colors come out. You can really see its 
rat-like little attitude and outlook. <laughs> and that it doesn't give a shit about the host. Really, it doesn't. We always use that example of, it doesn't even have to be an expensive bike, just like a couple hundred dollar bike. And if you're going off the cliff or going into a, a gully, what do you try to save, you or the bike? You usually try to save the bike. <laughs> that shows you how much the head has has you in a, in a level of uh, value. <laughs> you're lower than a bike. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you're getting washed up in the rocks and all you do is try to save the surfboard. <laughs> you forget about the body. I'll die on these rocks, but I won't get a ding in the board. <laughs> this is a weird warped way of seeing things. I don't think you need that much information. One event like that should tell you everything you need to know. Yeah. So this is not of you. That which is talking as you is not of you. Yeah. So I think it's very important. And I don't care if it's made up or if it's true, but to draw some distinct lines between that activity and us. Yeah. Because I really believe what allows that activity to thrive is the identification as us. I do. That's I can't see the root of the problem as anything other than that. Yeah. We seemingly forget who we, what we are, and we take on this bondage to be who we are. Yeah. And we live for self and as self. We come in here and things that could never would have never have happened happen. Yeah. Because it's sort of like, it's not just like an, an intervention, it's a, it's a lifetime of intervention. The program allows whatever you want to call it, grace, the higher power, to intervene on our lives, yeah, and it get between us and this parasite, yeah, and now we're aligned with a higher power, and so the game is tilted for us to win, yeah, Pro the recovery progresses, there's nothing the parasite can do to stop it, really. It has to convince us once again that we're the parasite. Once you recognize you're not that, it loses its grip. Yeah, it does. It may seem like it's tighter at it for a point, but it doesn't last long. And it starts, you start having a long, longer intervals of being relieved from the bondage of self than being in the bondage of self. Yeah, and it's an inevitability. That, that power of the infinite is pulling you out of that old gravitational field. It's done. Like a great master in India says, hey, your head is in the tiger's mouth already. Yeah. Yeah, you're being pulled in. It's over. So thank God. But a lot of times we keep pledging allegiance to the old God, even when we share. We share about the light and I'm feeling really great, but don't worry, I'm still fucked. I'm still crazy. Yeah, we're, It's a constant like uh, a, a haunting. When the ghost has been removed from the house, there's still a haunting of it, yes? It's insane. And some of it's gone on for years. You've been in recovery for years and you're seemingly still haunted by the trumpets of yesterday about the, what you did when you were out there. Don't you see that we were powerless over it? That it's time to have like a blanket forgiveness of what you did under its influence because you couldn't have done anything else. Yeah, that's the definition of powerlessness. You couldn't do anything else. Why isn't there relief and acceptance in that? Because we're still believing we could have done something different. Yeah, it's not true. What do you think the definition of powerlessness is? You're dancing with something and you're gonna stop when it wants to stop, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you're gonna start when it wants to start, yeah? You basically don't have any say in the matter. Instead, it just keeps it keeps haunting us after 30 years of sobriety. Jesus Christ. 
It was a ghost to begin with. And now it's still haunting us as if it's real. Yeah. So yeah, there is a solution. And at this point in the book, he was just trying to make it as open as possible to every type of character there was. Yeah. I think he really bent over backwards to a point of absurdity, really. Yeah. Because now it's more attraction, not than not promotion. In that point, it was sort of promotion in a way. But now, the obviousness that AA works is obvious. It's it's probably the only thing that actually shows any kind of workability concerning this disease. Yeah. So it doesn't need to be promoted. Yeah. So if you don't want it, far out. There's a lot of people that do. I'd rather pay attention to them. Yeah. I don't want to sit here talking to, to I'm blue in the face, trying to convince someone that's already convinced. Yeah. They're, they're in the pledging of allegiance to that lower power. What the hell? Yeah. Life will be the best teacher. I swear. I could try to convince someone one night going out can convince them for the rest of their lives <laughs> that it's never going to be different. Yeah. More than hours and hours of, all right, this is a series to convince people that aren't convinced that they're fucked, you know? No, get fucked again, and maybe that will be the convincer. So, all right, thanks. Thanks, Paul. Now's the time for everyone to raise your hand if you I'll have I'll be right a back, question. too, right back. Okay. While Paul is away, I'll remind you of his website, zenbitchslap.com, where you can find t-shirts, you can find his books, you can find events, uh, you can find the works uh, on, on uh, his reflections and on his uh, non-duality meetings uh we're here tuesdays and thursdays for recovery uh at 10 30 in the morning pacific time uh and uh for the non-duality sessions uh it is pacific time wednesday seven o'clock in the evening and saturday afternoon at 1 30 pacific time do we have any questions that Paul can delve into that he can chew on for a while? Spit out his wisdom. I'm ready to spit some wisdom out. You bet. I got some. Oh. All right, Ann, well, Ann's here. She's going to spit here. some wisdom yes. back. Do we want Anne first? Um, yeah, let Anne, yes, Anne's here. Okay. I'm not spitting any wisdom. I'm trying to work around this cat that's got a crush on you, Paul. Yeah. I was reading um, page 103 recently, and this was really stuck out to me. I said it, the, it's the last um, two sentences, three of the, of the chapter. After all, our problems were of our own making. Bottles were only a symbol. Besides, we have stopped fighting anybody or anything. We have to. But it seems we're still fighting. Well, this one, I'd like to say that this is a phase of recovery that you see after our, all our problems were of our own making. I don't believe they stay there. I believe when you break through the avoidance of trying to take any responsibility by blaming circumstances and other people, yeah, by doing the inventory and seeing your role in things, yes, I think that leads to a couple of other waves of recovery that they weren't around long enough to share, yeah, and that wave is 
you'll see that a lot of the problems were not of your own making. And I'm not talking about it was my mother or the employer or the cop. You'll see that there's something that's occupied the space you think is an individual separate unit. Something has occupied that and has been using it to express itself through. Yes? Like it says on page 64, self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us. So us doesn't mean, us gives, us has a whole different uh, meaning than self, yeah? They're two different things. So here's us, all of us, and yet all of us are inhabited by something that can be called self. And that self, if it's dominant, yeah, is manifesting through us. All the while it's manifesting through us, we live in this nonchalant manner of thinking it's us the whole time. Yeah? To the point where there's not much investigation. So now we do the inventories, and one of the ways to do the inventory, it's suggested to look to look at how self manifests in various ways is what has defeated us. So at that point, we're not going to look as if the problem is of our own making. We're looking to see the real source of the problem, which is self. Yes, you see it? So recovery brings us, recovery is a verb, yeah? It doesn't end, does it? You can say, I have recovered, but that's an activity still, yeah? So recovery obviously when you were out there obsessed with self when you were young you thought every you had to do with everything i mean when i walked in a room and someone yawned i took it personally it was because i showed up and i'm boring yes i mean that's an insane sense of responsibility i thought i was responsible for my father not being able to play with me because he was sick i thought i was responsible for that that's so what would you want to do with that overbearing sense of responsibility you'd like to forget it yeah so then how could i forget it by getting loaded was a pretty good way so then i became i went the opposite direction where i wasn't responsible for anything you know i'm not causing your feelings that's how you feel yeah and so on and so forth so then my <laughs> life is completely unmanageable i come in aa and they tell me to do an inventory and now look at my role once again. Yeah, but now in a sober manner. So I say, all right, I do. And I take responsibility to the point where I make amends for a lot of the stuff that I quote unquote did out there. Yeah, but it didn't stay at that. Yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of looking at what's mine and what's not mine. And then that's the only way you're going to recognize self is usually by recognizing its manifestations that are happening through you. Yeah. And then by seeing, wait, wait a minute. Why am I calling resentments mine if they're of self? It means it seems like a weird thing, even though I walked into the inventory thinking they were my resentments. And usually I walk out of the inventory still thinking they're my resentments. So some part of the, the, the disease protects itself from any kind of investigation, really. Yeah. So now we look at, we take that theme, being convinced self manifested in various ways is what has defeated, defeated us. We will now look at some of its common manifestations, resentment. It doesn't say my resentment, does it? It says resentment. Yeah. So where is the bondage of self concerning resentment? My resentment. That's the bondage of self. Yes? The bondage of self isn't really resentment. It's my resentment. Yeah? My, and my fear is mostly anxiety, really, mental anxiety. Mm-hmm. Yeah? I mean, I may be a nervous wreck, but I'm not threatened at all today. I'm just threatened in my own head. And I'm reacting as if that false evidence is true. So basically, I'm in, I'm in fight or flight, and I'm 
in my room and there's no one around. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> that shows something some something has an undue influence over me where I'm not even responding to what's happening I'm reacting to what's not happening I think that's pretty much a takeover I mean if you want evidence that something is inhabiting you that's a pretty good piece of evidence yeah I'm making a lot of shit so just by the thinking of it yeah, and just and and just by claiming that these thoughts are mine, yeah, and how can they be? We've gone over this. You hear uh, everyone in AA sh- basically shares the same thoughts. So how could they be my thoughts? Yeah, is it my house when like eight thousand people occupy it? I wouldn't call. I couldn't be out. It would. That term would be sort of out of place. Oh, it's, I want you to come over to my house and then I bring a girl back and there's 8,000 other, 8, other people. I thought this was your house. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, so these are my resentments. No, they're not. But the, the point is, we were trying to be filled with resentment at the no resentment. These aren't my resentments. They're caused by him and her. Yeah. We were led by a failed system. So the failed system took the shit, yeah, and then it tried to show us how to how to cover it up, yeah, and it didn't work. So now we've done it. We've done it that way, looking at our role, and then by looking at our role, we see something else's role. Hopefully, that's not one of the points of sharing this information, so that when you next do a tenth step or an inventory you look at self's manifestations instead of looking at your behaviors. Yeah. Try it on, see if it works better. And I'm telling you, there's a huge difference. It's like sometimes when the animals in the wild and they're domesticated. Well, a a wild resentment doesn't have the life expectancy of a my resentment. A my resentment can live for fucking as long as you live. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that seems to be funny as long as i'm alive this resentment seems to be alive wait a minute where's the connection there i must be giving this resentment life what where can where is where's that hose how is it my the word my you're identified as the one who has the resentment that's why it has you <laughs> Tell me if I'm completely off base, because if I am, I've been off base for 30 years. <laughs> I hope people haven't just been amusing me for 30 years. But uh, you, you see the difference between my anything and anything, yeah? my anything after and any just anything after there's a huge difference yeah what's on what's going on something somehow is adding itself to whatever i come in contact with yeah and have i liked the addition because i think it's the source of the heaviness in my life yeah and I've been introduced to a new possibility. I can be relieved from that bondage. Why do I want to carry fucking resentments that came and went 30 years ago and have them in my own family zoo called my resentment? Yeah, just like with this cat. Yeah, you see the cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if it was just a cat, it would probably split, but it's your cat. And now, all right, it just hangs out, hangs out, hangs out. Yeah, and it has a different agenda. It's not involved with this Zoom. It wants you to pet it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't. You know. I think for me it was very. It's been very profound to see the difference between uh, self and us. Yeah, it's just been amazingly. Uh, influential in how I travel throughout the day 
and I'm just passing it on with the hopes it has a similar effects on you because uh, it's brought me great relief. Yeah. And it's allowed me to just, I don't have to shut the door on the past. Yeah. Nor do I regret it. It doesn't have much play on me today. Yeah. So, yeah. And Mickey, thank you for that sh reading. You there's bet. A lot, there's a lot there. And uh, I'm not a believer that our problems are of our own making. I don't believe that. Yeah. I really believe, you know, let's say if you were debilitated by an illness. I just show, I just watched the movie and this kid had schizophrenia, yeah? And they kept making it clear that he wasn't schizophrenic. It, he, he was something and then there was schizophrenia. And that was allowing him to be able to live with schizophrenia because it's not him. Yes, that was the possibility of relief, was to be clear, just because schizophrenia has me, I'm not schizophrenia, yeah? So that's the same, this is the same idea with this. This disease really has us as us, yeah? That can be seen through. We can see where we're where us and not self. We can see that, yeah? And maybe that which was unbearable will become quite light just by that recognition, yeah? And this isn't about heavy lifting. You don't have to join a spiritual gym. We're not, we're not like a travel agent in disguise telling you you have to go to different continents to, to, to increase this growth. It's a simple invitation. You have all the information already. You're involved in a way of life that can, af can effectively treat this thing where the problem will not exist for you a day at a time. All of that's there. Maybe just a little understanding can go a long, long way with all of those in things in place, yeah? You know how to do an inventory, yeah? You know the idea of turning one's will and life over to care of something else. You know the archway to freedom. We know all this. Yeah. All right. So what can be brought to this, this, some understanding about the exact nature of the wrong? That's what can be brought to it. Yeah. So that the wrong isn't what's claiming to be practicing the solution. Yeah. Because while it is, it will be limiting the effects of the solution. Hmm. All right. Okay, we have a couple hands up. Um, Keith, you want to come in? Sure, I will. Paul, if you are, you can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. If you are off course on this, uh, all I can say is you're, it's definitely contagious. And what I want to, and, and, and in a good way. I just uh, want to share with those who are maybe new to the program. I'm, I'm two years into the program, maybe more now, two and a half. Uh, and I, it just happened that when I was uh, doing my inventory in the program, it corresponded with my finding this very message, both the uh, Tuesday, Thursday message and the uh, Wednesday, Saturday message, which were live at that time uh, in person. I was living in California. So uh, just at the time when I was putting together my list of my resentments, I heard this message and it landed that they aren't my resentments. And so when I met with my sponsor, and I really want to ask everybody to listen to this who is doing their, the list that they think belongs uh, all of these examples of their resentments. I went through it. And at one point, my 
my sponsor, despite his best efforts, had to pay me a compliment. He said, you are doing this with such robust, with robustness and zest. You're really into the spirit of this. And I see, you know, some people have to be dragged kicking and screaming. And I think he said, what's your secret or something like that. And I said, they're not my resentments. Which means I'd already heard that they're not mine. They were resentments of self that were being held as mine. So I gave him a little bit of information about that. I shared about it in a way that didn't involve using the actual lingo. And he said, well, but you still have to own them, don't you? And I said, yes, I got left holding the bag. That's why I am in recovery. Now, he didn't fully know what I was saying, and I didn't fully know what I was saying. But I do know that the freedom to put down that list of resentments as resentments of self, resentments that were identified as a self at the time that the resentments were accrued and for the long period that they were held, I just was incredibly blessed to have found this message at the time that I was doing that, that they weren't mine. And the seeing, you know, I'll, I'll share a, a, a little anecdote. When I was growing up, my mom used to say to me and my brother, stop being so self-centered. Or she was on to something. But in retrospect, I think, if you're identified as self, what's more appropriate than to act self-centered? You can't be less self-centered if you're identified as being a self. So what my mother didn't know how to say was, Keith, stop identifying with self and acting as if you're identified with self. <laughs> that might have broken through, but she couldn't have said that. She said, stop being so self-centered. I tried very hard as a self to be less self-centered. It didn't go well. So anyway, if you're doing, your, if you're doing the resentments, folks, in a very real sense, they are not yours, but you have to do them for the one that accrued them, namely the sense of being a self. So thank you, Paul, for once again clarifying. Uh, thanks for the message. Thank you, Keith. Yes, this is a, what most people are afraid of in a lot of ways that are in the community when they hear this message. They see it as a threat to something that's brought them great value, which it isn't to me, but I understand that. And because they're always afraid of going back to that irresponsibility with the act of addiction. So they really want to be, they really want to take ownership, but hopefully that ownership will lead to a relinquishment of the ownership. I think it's past due. Yeah. So yeah, you own it, but you are not the owner of it. <laughs> so you own it in the inventory. And it's represented by the willingness to do the ninth step. You go and make the amends and shit like that. And you're and basically, I like to hold it as accountability instead of responsibility. Yeah. It's but I know the whole process in a way because I was inordinately feeling responsible for everything. I try to become un unresponsible for everything. So when I came into recovery, I had to take responsibility for all the shit I shirked, but it doesn't stay stagnant like that. That's not the end of its growth. Yeah. The outgrowing of it isn't, doesn't stop there. It grows into an accountability. So you see something else's role in it, which is other than us. And when you do, the possibility of being free from it becomes available, yeah? And it usually informs you, you've been trying to be free as it most of this time, which is obviously the bondage of self. So I like the idea of accountability, and I always use the story about my the dog I have shitting on the neighbor's lawn and the neighbor calling me up and throwing a fit and saying his shit on the lawn a number of times. So I go over there, I clean up because I'm accountable and I get home and then I don't walk my dog around that guy's house anymore, but I don't carry guilt and shame for shitting on the guy's lawn for 30 years because I didn't shit on the lawn. It was very clearly the dog shit on the lawn. Yeah. 
So in this example, dog represents self. <laughs> so, I mean, if you've been carrying, you know, the, you know, those shit bags, if you've been carrying the shit bags, religiously picking up self shit and calling it yours for 30 years, the day has come. <laughs> the day has come. You can see it's not you, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine because if it's your shit there's going to be some of it you think is valuable <laughs> you're going to be hanging these shit bags all over your little life because of the mind you're like hoarding you're shit hoarding so see if it's not yours and the possibility of being free from it becomes available really it does if it isn't you're just going to be picking up shit most of your life. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> That's the whole idea of the Poopa Scoopatory was the real solution was to find the dog. So you don't have to be a master of picking up shit. Just get rid of where the source of the shit and you won't have to pick up so much shit. Yeah. A random dog will come here and there, but it's, you won't be proliferating with shit all day. In this case, you're the dog, and the beautiful news is, and you're not. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I can attribute massive relief to this idea. Literally, I've observed years and years of living since this idea landed, and uh, it's very clear in my observation of. Uh, what's allowing this relief to stabilize and it's definitely not self <laughs> so yeah i'll just keep showing up every tuesday and thursday yeah <laughs> i used to share at a meeting and every time i share the same guy would share again to sort of rebut what he thought I said. It was such a trip. I as like a like a overly protector, like a dad and a mom to the new people. I uh, is and uh, I would I would I knew exactly when I ended sharing who would put their hand up. Exactly, it was a trip, and. Uh, there was like watchers to keep me from uh, infecting people with new ideas. I could see the understanding and the intent, but I felt it was misdirected. Yeah. I could have seen the same way they shared as being very defining and very, uh, to me, dead in a way. So, but uh, yeah, that's why I sort of like these platforms on this Zoom. Because uh, the way people set it up and I can share, I can just put it out there. It's not like to cause, a, a, you know, an arm wrestling match. Yeah, I, I have no problem with the program of recovery. It's beautiful. I don't want to change any steps or any principles. All I want to emphasize is a clear understanding of the exact nature of the wrong that everything else is built upon. Yeah. The design for living is to affect that. Yeah, so I see that. Uh, and um, yeah. As a humble member, something revealed by something revealed something to me. And over the years, it's just, uh, you know, I was joking about uh, I could be wrong. I know I'm not wrong. Yeah. To the capacity that I can understand, I'm not wrong on this topic. Yeah. You may not see it as right, and that's your point of view, but I'm not wrong. Yeah. So, and if, and if I'm wrong, I'll go down with this ship. Because I've had a happy time on it. <laughs> so... Yeah. Usually sometimes you come to a point and after 30 years, that point has never been disrupted or or uh, 
or proven to be off, then you're on to something. I think you have a sound basis to share. Yeah. Because it's gone it's gone under the grueling testimonial of living it. Yeah. <laughs> living it. And uh the the lightness that it's allowed to occur in a lot of heavy traveling. You know, I've had a lot of uh you know physical trauma that had lasting effects and had to have a lot of operations and stuff so yeah it's sort of like a tire salesman i've actually driven about eight hundred thousand miles on these tires i'm i'm talking about i guarantee the tread will allow you to travel later <laughs> I don't want you to buy the tires. They're already on. I just want you to know <laughs> that you have the tires. <laughs> what happens if you have a secure, reliable ride? You get to look at the scenery a lot more. If you're afraid you're not going to make it to the next gas station and shit like that all day. Yeah. Are you really enjoying the journey? No, exactly. So we're in good hands. Why not act like we are? Yeah. Hasn't something done for you what you can't do for yourself? Just open up the idea of what you can't do for yourself. Let it get larger. Yeah. And then respond to the evidence. I think a strong assurance will grow that can withstand the false evidence that keeps getting showered. Yeah, all the propaganda that's run. I think you can withstand that quite easily because you're based on something that's truly reliable. Yeah, that you're not in the hopes of being taken care of. You're in the faith that you are taken care of. Yeah. Putting it off is just too late. Yeah. It's too late. All the evidence is in. Yeah. We've all been on, perhaps there is a better way. Yeah. When do we start responding to being taken care of instead of reacting to the mental state all day? Which master is running the show? Yeah. I've seen people who were completely airtight screwed and it got unscrewed just by living this way of life a day at a time without much awareness. They were pretty much out to lunch, but they still showed up and did it was of service. It had nothing to do with their acumen or their clarity. But their life got a whole lot freaking better. And things that were looking from their point of view to either a lifelong sentence or at least 10 to 12 years or something like that. And basically, really nothing happened. Yeah. And the thing of never, ever seeing their kids again, they probably wish they don't see their kids as much now. Yeah. Total turnarounds. All by just showing up a day at a time in this incredible influencing atmosphere called recovery. Who knows what's going to recover? You don't. Yeah. Maybe you get, you recover your sense of taste. You can taste food. Now you recover a lot of stuff. Yeah. You recover your ability to, you know, smell the roses and to smell the coffee. You recover a lot, a lot of stuff. When you come out of that domination of, from self into the light of the Holy Spirit, let's call it. Yeah. Why, why be a testament to the old employer while you're under the new employer? Yeah, just. Yeah. I learned a lot from the old employer. I did. Yeah. And I don't want it. And I'm very convinced and clear about that. I don't want to live in a mental form of slavery. <laughs> I don't. I don't want my head to be occupied 
by what's not happening. I like to be able to discern true from false. Yeah. I like to see where real importance lies instead of made up shit all day. I would. Yeah. I would like to have a sense of gratitude when I look around instead of lack. Yeah. Which I have. All this has come to pass. I'm incredible fucking uh, awe of it. Yeah. Who would have thunk we had all these possibilities in us? I would never have found them out for sure. Because I had this uh, fucking chip on my shoulder as if I knew everything. How am I going to learn anything with that attitude? Yeah. Yeah. The world I like to travel is a known world. I want to know what's going to happen. I want to know. Well, that's not, that's not, that's not the excitement of living. Yeah. What gives you the great assurance not to know is something truly reliable in your life. Something of spirit allows you to live a day not knowing and finding out. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, completely awesome. And it's not about how far you want to go. It's how far that thing wants to take you. Yeah, just submit to this, to this, whatever's living through us. You know, submit to that power and see what it has in store for you. And then just be amazed about uh, how all... It's just so, we can't even get close to, to the, the wisdom that that expresses, yeah? We just see things in comparison. It sees things as one. It's unbelievable. It's a totally different sight, so to speak, yeah? Yeah. Just stay with this program. Be willing to be available to it and others, and then you know yeah. yeah i believe the next wave from responsibility is accountability and recognizing what is of you and what's not of you and bring what's not of you when it appears to step six and seven and have that reconfigured and put back into what is of you yeah yeah, so all those ropes in the shape of a noose will be stretched out and be, they'll be used as a rope can be used for other purposes, yeah? All that stuff, just bring it up to six and seven, yeah? And ask that, hum you know, humbly ask that power to reconfigure it. It's just, it's just bent up energy, you know, you know, the mental state likes to make knots. It likes to make fucking knots and disturbances and obstructions yeah this power comes in takes that changes it and puts it to good use yeah i mean once you tie rope into a noose how much use is there pretty much but the rope has an incredible amount of possibilities yeah you're not the noose that your head has you in you're not that noose yeah. Yeah. So. And of course, the way of life continues. I'm in the habit of being sober. Yeah. I'm not thinking about being sober. I'm not going over how to be sober. I'm not hoping I will be sober. I'm in the habit of being sober. Yeah. That habit which seems like an action, but it's not accompanied by thought. Yeah, it's a habit. Yeah. I don't know life any other way other than sober now. All the other memories are gone. The only way I know life is sober. Yeah. I never think about it. I don't drink anything. I don't do anything. I've done stuff in hospitals. It was totally okay when it was appropriate. You know, I live life as if I never lived any other way, sober. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The problem doesn't exist for me. It doesn't seem like any, not any solution I'm ever offered has drinking and using involved in it. 
<laughs> not ever for like 30 years i haven't not one solution has come with that as oh yeah let's get loaded <laughs> it's, yeah so now that that's established so much more can get established yeah now that external insanity has been removed now a lot a lot of possibilities can show up what's on offer really when you're living a lot of possibilities so i'm happy so happy to be here and have us have our little slice of a community and yeah and uh you mean a lot to me you affect me a lot and uh yeah and you allow uh this note to come out which is the the high point of my action figure seat assignment <laughs> obviously this is what i was meant to do today so or be used to do i'm very happy about that so anyone else uh mika mickey mickey mika mickey Anyone else, son? She's muted. Okay, I don't see anyone. Um, Skylar was around, but I don't even see Skylar anymore. She came in like a little butterfly. She tasted the nectar and she took off. As butterflies. Something all. else came up for her, maybe. Well, but I don't see that, anyone, Paul. Well, that's good then, because I, I spoke earlier, so uh, I've been speaking since nine in the morning, so that's all right. I can take it. I can take off now. You want to say your hellos? I do. I want to say my hellos, goodbyes. There's Kerry, as always. Nice to see you, Kerry. Always a pleasure to be a part of uh, this thing with you. Mike, hey, Paul, one quick thing, Paul. Yeah, I just want to I, I caught the tail end of Sunday night, which I thought was awesome. I mean, you were really uh, to me, and I'm not just sucking up, but you were like glowing. <laughs> and your talk was uh, fantastic. I came in a little late. My question is, how can I watch that talk? Um, we'll have to find out Mike. I don't know, Mike. Can we get, can we access that video? Yeah, I don't know if they post it, so I'll look into it. We'll look into it. We'll post it on the website if we can. Yes? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Nice to see you, Mike. And that's when Mike does all this kind of stuff. And uh, he's a man of service. We got Connor from Dublin. Nice to see Connor. He's going out for, he's taking a little nap now. Yeah, uh, he's up again. He's resurrected. We got Paul, Paul number one over there in the UK. Nice to see you, Paul. Thank you. We Paul. got Jacob from Seattle. Always a pleasure. Ruby from Wichita. She's got the fire going. I like that fireplace. It's awesome. Hmm. Marty. Marty, the man of, of self-inquiry. Always good to see you. Mickey did a great job. She's do, doing a great job as the, the informal mayor of Madeira. Very nice. Yes. We got Jillian. Oh, pleasure. Jillian always has a, she's like, a, she's like the cat got the mouse with this message. That's good. Yeah, it seems to be working for you. Great. Helen, nice to see you, Helen. Yeah. Remember, you're a lifetime member, honey. Yeah. We got Mike O. Always a pleasure, Mike O. Joseph from France somewhere. Always a pleasure, Joseph. Owen K. Owen is from uh, Dublin too, right? Or is it? Yeah, Dublin. Thought so. We got Maria. I don't know where Maria's from. Where are you from, Maria? Oh, you told me before. 
Is it Germany? <laughs> no, I'm from Spain. I'm English, but I live in Spain. Oh, in Spain. Oh, wow. Thank you very much, I'm Paul. English. Thank you, everyone. If I was English, I'd hopefully be living in Spain also. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stefan, on having never left, thank you, my friend. Yes. You're not speaking speaks volumes. Very nice. We got Vicky. Vicky George's, yes, he's a co-owner of The Void. Yes, yeah. She's a Madeira Nelso. She is. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Oh, there's, and there's Michael, another Madeira. A Madeira. There was a town we used to speak of in Southern California, Julian, this mountain town. We used to call it non Julian. It was like the non duality of. Uh... <laughs> There's Bev. Nice to see Bev. I think I see only her back, but there she goes. She moved. She moved for us. That was nice. A beautiful sky where Bev is. Beautiful. Yeah. We got Walter. Walter from the Netherlands. Nice to see you, Walter. Made me day. We got Keith from Boise, Idaho, looking beautiful up there. Very nice. Uh, let's see, we've got Tommy. He's got a flat screen. Anne, Kay, got rid of the cat for a little while. Nice to see you, Anne. Thank you for everything. You run a tight ship, Anne. Yeah. yeah. Leah, always a pleasure to see you, Leah. From our first meeting, it's been a nice journey. Yes, yeah. Kurt, as always. Good to see you. Man of Redondo Beach, always a pleasure. We're gonna have to come down there soon, sooner or later. Yeah, come on down. Yeah, I wanna get back in the ocean down there. All right, we got, uh, as long as I can, if I can. We got, <laughs> uh, here's the Mika, Mika W. She's uh, dropped in to say hello. Always a pleasure, Mika. We got Carl. Nice to see you, Carl. Always has a nice little smile on his face. Very happy. Chris B. from Mammoth Lakes. Always a pleasure. We got Rich A. Yeah. Or oh, that's the same way I would say it in if I was in Canada. Rich A. Yeah. We got Nina, not Tina or Mina. But Nina, one of my favorite people from Los Angeles, who I think is from New York for some reason. All right. We got Oliver from Ireland. No, not from Ireland. Where are you from, Oliver? UK? Germany? Uh, I'm from Berlin, yeah. I'm Berlin, originally. I thought yeah, so. I'm an immigrant, but uh, from Berlin, yeah. Well, we're all immigrants. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I love that. Thanks for being sober today with us. Yeah, fantastic. Mika, another one. Oh, no, that was Mika. All right. Oh, there's James Lebowski with his lovely granddaughter. Yeah. And then we got, uh, let's say, If and Rich. We got, I got to read these things. Oh, Maggie. I always like to see Maggie's picture. Maggie is, it was like someone who's welcoming me after a long journey. Nice. That's a very nice picture. Oh, Al, uh, we got Alon. Nice to welcome, Maggie. Good to see you. Thank we you. got Al Alar, Kristen, Roop, uh, Sharon P. We got Mia from the UK. Nice to see you, Mia. Uh, let's see, did I end up here? I think that's it. Hey, thanks so much for the day. Really appreciate it. We'll be back on Thursday. We got the Wednesday and Saturday. And, uh, you know, I just uh, thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Thanks, Paul. See you guys. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. See you, Kurt. See you everybody.